If you guys have a noisy power supply, you might be tempted to throw it out and get a new one. Today I'm going to show you guys how to change fans out on common 3D printer power supplies like this one I'm holding here. So if you've been sitting there and you hear your printer start grumbling as soon as your heated bed kicks on, it could be that the fan that's cooling the power supply down is on its way out. Now this power supply came from our print farm and it's probably about six years old at this point. So with all the hours on it, this fan has started grinding. Now just for comparison, I also have Creality's knockoff of the Meanwhile 350 watt that's in my right hand here. And you can see they both use a 60 millimeter fan. Now if you have a power supply that looks slightly different, like this one that has a fan on the end, the directions are still going to apply, but the way you get into the power supply and the fan size may be different. We're gonna go ahead and open up the casing. We're gonna check the voltage on the fan inside because depending on your power supply brand, it could be a 12 or 24 volt fan, and you wanna make sure to replace it with the same voltage fan that was in there to begin with. If your power supply does take a 60 millimeter fan, we carry both 12 and 24 volt versions of these and we also carry 40 millimeter fan sizes in 12 and 24 volts as well in case you have a power supply that takes that. So the first thing you need to do is get your power supply out of your printer. This one came from Ender 3 Pro so it was easy to unbolt this from the chassis. I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off of here and you'll see all the connections for the power input and the power output. Whenever you take a power supply off of a machine it would be a good idea to take a picture of the wire connections so when you go to put it back together you're able to put it back together correctly. So on this one the cover slides off and you can see we have our DC connections and our AC connections. I'm going to actually leave this just like this. I needed to get the cover off so I can take this top cover off. Now with the screws removed we can take the cover off and we can see here it's quite dusty, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this out with my air compressor. Now if you look here, we can see that the fan is a 12 volt fan, so we're going to replace this with a 12 volt fan. Now on some of these, you can see the wire can get caught up in the glue. You can go ahead and just gently pull this out, like so. And then disconnect it from the control board. The important thing to also check is to make sure the polarity on the plug of the new fan matches the old one, and if it doesn't, we're gonna have to move the pins around. So now we have a nice clean power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and take the old fan out by unscrewing the screws on the cover. We're gonna be reusing these screws to put the new fan in, and we also need to make sure we put the new fan in the correct orientation. We wanna make sure when we put the new fan in that we match the direction of the old one. On all these axial fans, the airflow direction is always towards the supports. And if you're ever in doubt, you can also look on the casings. Most fans will have a mark showing the direction of the airflow, as well as the direction of the rotation of the blades. I'm gonna grab my new TH3D fan here, and we're gonna put it in the power supply in the stock location, and put the screws in. There we go, just snug them up, do not over tighten them. And now we wanna double check the polarity of the new fan plug versus the old one. And if we look here, they're inverted. So we're gonna need to pop these pins out of the new fan plug and switch the black and the red around. To switch these around, I just like to take a little flat head here. I'm gonna push in right here. And we should be able to pull the pin out. And then we're gonna do the same for the other side. Now before we put the pins in the opposite direction, we wanna go ahead and lift up on these little tabs that we push down. These little tabs here are what hold it into the plug. There we go, they're pushed up. And now again, we wanna make sure we're putting it in the same direction as the old plug. So now looking at the old plug, we're gonna make sure we put the wires in the new plug the same way. So now we've got the wires correct for the new fan. All we need to do now is plug this back into the board where the old one came from and then put it back together and then we're done. So we have the new fan installed. I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. 
If you disconnected any of these leads, make sure you have the AC lines going to the AC terminals and the DC lines going to the DC terminals. So just like that, I've got my power supply reassembled. I can put this back in my printer. I've got a new fan in here, and we can go ahead and toss this old grindy one out in the trash. You can tell on this fan that the bearings are pretty worn out because when I spin it, it doesn't spin very smoothly, and it stops spinning pretty quickly. So just like that, I've got a brand new fan in my power supply, and hopefully I can get another five years out of this power supply. Typically, especially with these name brand Meanwell power supplies, the fan is going to be the first thing to go and the power supply is going to last a lot longer than that because of the quality components. Now, even if you have a cheaper no name power supply, it's probably always going to be cheaper to just replace the fan instead of the whole unit. So the things to check for when you are replacing a fan is matching the size, matching the voltage, and then making sure the polarity of the wires match the one of the old fan. So if for some reason the plug on the old fan doesn't match the plug on the new fan, you can cut the wires halfway on both fans and reuse the plug from the original fan by splicing these wires into the new fan's wiring. Now, if you do have to do any wire splicing, I would recommend soldering and heat shrinking it if you have those tools, or if you don't, these little solder heat shrink things that we carry in our store are also really helpful as all you need to use these is a heat gun. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope I gave you guys a little more confidence and broke things down on how quick and easy it is to replace a fan in your power supply if it is going out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, happy printing. I'll see you guys on the next one.